Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Rick here. And on today's video, we're going to talk about the air safe hitch and whether it's right for you. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So if you own an Airstream, you've probably heard of front end separation. Also, if you watch YouTube videos, you've probably seen a recent video from Mark and Trish from Keep Your Daydream where they talk about front end separation and some of the repairs that they've had to have done to their Airstream. So today, I wanna to talk with you a little bit about front end separation, what it is, what it isn't, as well as ways to mitigate that, specifically the air safe hitch. So if you haven't seen the video from Keep Your Daydream about front end separation, they do a fantastic job of explaining what it is, how it's caused, and then ways to repair it. Uh, Vinny from Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair does a great job of explaining how he goes about doing those repairs if your Airstream is suffering from front end separation. Now, I'm not an expert, not like Vinny or his crew, so I'm not gonna pretend to tell you how to repair it. Uh, so I would recommend that if you wanna check that out, check out that video on KYD. It's really a, a great wealth of information. But what I do wanna talk with you is just kinda of give an overview of what it is front end separation, what kind of causes it, some of those theories, as well as what you can do potentially to, to prevent it. So let's get started. So what is front end separation? So that is when the shell of your Airstream here begins to separate from the frame. There are a lot of theories that talk about how that occurs, and there are a lot of telltale signs uh, that you need to be looking for. On our Airstream, we're starting to see some of those initial signs of front end separation. I've got some dimpling on the two corners on the front end of our Airstream near the front storage bay doors. I'm also starting to see some rivets uh, that are starting to stretch. The heads are starting to stretch. So I think it's just gonna be a matter of time before those rivets end up shearing off, potentially causing further damage to the Airstream. Again, I'm not an expert, I'm not an Airstream technician, uh, but I have done my research. So I'll just share with you some of those theories that I think are pretty common. And if you're interested, you can check these out on Air Forums. You can check them out on Facebook pages. Uh, you'll get 101 opinions, but I would tell you uh, what you do need to do is uh, consult with a trained Airstream technician. So some of the theories uh, that are out there about what causes front end separation are when people um, put excessive loads on the back of their Airstream, such as a bike rack or cargo racks to carry additional equipment. Uh, the theory is, is that additional weight is putting stress on the front of the frame, which is gonna cause the shell and the frame to separate. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't have a bike rack or any type of additional cargo rack on our rig, uh, so I can't say that that is or isn't a contributing factor for us. I know it isn't a contributing factor because we don't have that uh, on our Airstream. The other theory is that uh, you can cause front end separation if you drag or bottom out your Airstream going into a gas station or going into uh, a campsite or coming out of your driveway if you bottom out. We are always very careful to ensure that we never do that. Um, so. I can, I can say that that hasn't caused our front end separation. A third theory is stiff tow vehicle suspension and overloaded uh, weight distribution bars. This is a pretty common theory in that when you hitch up your Airstream to your tow vehicle and then you attach your weight distribution bars, you're causing a very stiff connection which doesn't allow the frame and the shell to move freely which is then causing some of that separation. That fatigue when you're hitting bumps, going over railroad tracks, uh, bridge expansion joints, you're causing that pushing and pulling of the frame against each other which is causing some of that front end separation. And then the fourth theory is that of a poor design by Airstream when they started putting these uh, front storage bays uh, in some of their models of Airstreams. So the theory on that is, as they were building these Airstreams here, uh, they had to cut out some of the structural integrity of the ribs that help attach uh, this shell to the frame to put in that uh, access door. Again, I can't say whether or not that is the direct cause. It does make sense that if you reduce some structural integrity, uh, you're gonna potentially have problems of frame separation. I think Airstream has started to realize that because they do make repairs and fixes 
uh, to their Airstreams, and I believe they've already started modifying some of the manufacturing process to further enhance and make a ro more robust connection between the shell of the Airstream and the frame of the Airstream. So if those are the four theories of front-end separation, what are those uh, preventive measures that you can take as an Airstream owner to help prevent any front-end separation? Well, first and foremost, I would say, you know, don't add any excess weight to the back of the Airstream. I'm not going to put a bike rack on there. I'm not going to put a cargo rack. I'm not going to carry a generator or anything back there on the back end of my Airstream. Uh, another preventive measure that I know a lot of Airstream owners do is they've went ahead and uh, changed their tires to 16-inch rims as well as they've installed lift kits. You know, you can get a 2-inch or 3-inch lift kit. That theory is that you're going to raise that ground clearance and it's going to prevent you from bottoming out when you're coming in or out of a driveway or a gas station or into a campsite or something to that effect. Uh, another preventive measure, again, is to adjust or modify your weight distribution connections and, and hookup using less uh, tension on your weight distribution bars. But again, I can't advocate for that. Uh, you need to check with your manufacturer's uh, guidelines on installation and proper use of that. Uh, but that is something else that uh, people can do. And then finally, the, the fourth preventive measure is to go ahead and have some reinforcement um, installed uh, brackets into your Airstream. Uh, we're currently working with a technician trying to get a, a scheduled appointment to go in and have him do some of that kind of preventive repair work uh, before our front end separation gets any worse. Uh, the intent will be for him to install some of those additional supporting brackets and any other bracing that is required to help firmly secure the skin of the Airstream to the frame as well as check underneath to see if there's any additional bracing that's required down there. The other preventive measure that we're going to do is, and as you can see, we've purchased an air safe hitch. So you may be asking, why did we go ahead and purchase an air safe hitch? Well, my theory on front end separation, again, this is just my theory, but just based off of my research and talking with other Airstream owners, it's a combination of, of two theories. Uh, the first theory is that there is some structural uh, integrity issues in the design of certain models of Airstreams, specifically the ones that have the front storage bays. Uh, those are the most common Airstreams that have front end separation issues. Uh, so that kind of leads you to believe that there is some credence to that theory. And then the other theory is uh, the stiff suspension and inability of the vehicle and the Airstream to move independently when they're being towed, which is causing additional fatigue and stress on the frame. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna go ahead and have a, a technician do some repairs to our Airstream, but we're also going to start using the AirSafe hitch and their technology of the airbag uh, hitch to help uh, prevent some of that stiff ride and additional fatigue to the frame uh, that may be causing some of our front end separation issues. So what are some of the pros and cons of using an air safe hitch? Well, I can't definitively say what those are, but I can tell you what air safe hitch is promising off of their website. So first and foremost, they're gonna tell you you're gonna get a much smoother ride with the airbag technology that they've incorporated into their hitch. In addition, it's going to increase your handling and control of your tow vehicle as well as your Airstream as you're driving down the road because you don't have that stiff connection of pushing and pulling against each other you know, that you would normally get with a more traditional weight distribution hitch. They're also promising you're going to have less wear and tear on your vehicle as well as on your Airstream on the frame specifically because now you don't have those hard jarring impacts anytime you go over across a railroad track or you're hitting some expansion joints in the road or you hit a pothole because that airbag is now absorbing a lot of that shock that your trailer and the frame would normally be experiencing. And the other uh, promise that they're not making, but that I'm making to myself is that the air safe hitch may help mitigate the front end separation. Again, I can't prove that. I don't think anybody can necessarily prove that. But if uh, the other three promises that air safe hitch is making, then I'm assuming that it's going to help to mitigate the front end separation. So what are the cons that I uh, mentioned about air safe hitch? Well, first and foremost, that doggone hitch is heavy. I'll tell you, uh, after I received our hitch, I also ordered the mounting bracket for the weight distribution 
hitch and then I applied my previous weight distribution mount to that as well. And all total, that's 114 pounds. That doesn't include uh, the weight distribution bars that I also have. And I think those probably weigh in about 20 pounds each, so that's an additional 40 pounds. So you're probably looking at close to 150, 160 pounds of weight. Anytime I'm moving that from the shed up here to the rig to go ahead and uh, go on a trip, I'm not carrying that. I'm gonna put it in a wheelbarrow or in a cart and I'm gonna pull it up here because it is that heavy. Um, if you're not able to pick that up by yourself, you're gonna require a second person to help you lift up that hitch. I can manage it myself, but I will tell you, it is not something that you just wanna you know, grab lightly and try to throw around because you could injure yourself, it is that heavy. The second con that I wanna tell you about is this hitch is expensive. Uh, we're not sponsored by AirSafe Hitch. I did not get any type of a discount. I did not get any, any type of uh, benefit from purchasing this hitch, and I did purchase it myself with my own money off of their website. They've got various classes of hitches. Uh, ours is a class six. And by the time I purchased that, as well as the weight distribution bracket that you have to buy separately. I think we are right about $2,000. Check out their website and they'll give you a full cost breakdown, but there's no way around it. It's an expensive hitch. So just be aware uh, that is uh, another con in my opinion. I would say probably the third negative on the AirSafe hitch is it is a little bit more complicated to set up for your rig. Um, a traditional weight distribution hitch uh, doesn't have as many, if any, moving parts uh, other than just elevating, getting the right height of your weight, weight distribution hitch and the adjustment on your weight distribution bars. You've still got to do that with the air safe hitch, but in the air safe hitch, you've also got to adjust for the airbags and some other adjustments with the tie rods. So it is a little bit more complicated. It's not quite as straightforward. But I think if you take your time, read the instructions from AirSafe, as well as your weight distribution hitch manufacturer, uh, you, you can figure it out. But it is a little bit more complicated to get dialed in than a traditional weight distribution hitch. And the fourth con that I wanna share with you is one that I can't either prove or disprove, but bottom line is AirSafe hitch may not be needed. It may not help with my front end separation. Um, I'm hopeful that it will, but I just want to be transparent with you, the viewers, that uh, I'm not necessarily advocating that you need to get this hitch, but I'm also not saying that it won't help uh, any problems that you may be having with your rig. So I can't say that it's needed, but I can't say that it won't mitigate the front end separation. So I guess there's still some unknowns there and we'll have to continue to do some more testing with it. So that brings us to the final question, the million dollar question that you're probably wondering, should Airstream owners jump on the AirSafe hitch bandwagon? Well, again, I can't answer that. Uh, you're gonna have to do some of your own research. Uh, you're gonna have to decide whether or not you wanna handle uh, the expense of buying the hitch if you wanna be able to handle the physical weight of the hitch, and whether or not you have an Airstream that is susceptible to front end separation. If you don't have uh, the desire for any of those, then I would tell you it's probably not the right hitch for you. But if you do have a Airstream that is susceptible to front end separation, uh, you, you don't have a problem with the expense of it, and you can also manage the weight of the hitch and the, and the setup of the hitch, then it may be the hitch that you need to buy. We're gonna share our thoughts in the coming months as we use this hitch, and we'll let you know what we think about it. But guys, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below. I'll do my very best to answer those questions. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, it helps YouTube know that you find this content useful. Also, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'd love to have you follow along uh, in our journeys. And if we don't hear from you, hopefully we'll see you down the road.